Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a fountain pen focus for you. We're going to be focusing on this. This is the Narwhal Key West. Now, I have two of these Key Wests. We're going to focus on this one, this gorgeous gold colored one. I will fetch the purple one in as well, just so we can have a little look at it. So join me now down on the mat. We'll take a look through the pen, do some size comparisons, look at some weights and some measures, do a writing sample, then I'll give you my thoughts and a score for this pen. Welcome down to the mat. Here we've got the two pens. These are the now wall Key West. So we've got the gold version and we've got the purple version here, just to show you. Let me get the purple one out of the way. The only difference between the two, other than the colour, the purple one, that's got a broad nib. This one's got a medium nib. So let's take a quick look through the body. So it's more like a, a torpedo type shape or a cigar type shape. At the end, we've got this nice dome. We quickly taper up until we come to the top of the clip. The clip, it's got a little bit of a lever there, but I've got to be honest, I find this, the clip here springy if I'm going from the bottom, but it's very, very stiff. The cap itself, we continue to taper out till we get just near the bottom of the clip. Then we go down single width till we come to this now or band. Here we've got some decoration on there. Let's turn that around so you can see that. The bottom of the band, we've then got a noticeable step down to the body. The body slightly translucent, so you can actually see the converter through it. And this goes down. Really gently tapering till we get near the end. Then we've got a sharp taper and again, we've got a dome end. I love the looks of these pens. They're sparkly. Problem with these, they're not really something that you could really take to a business meeting. So I tend to use these at home or if I'm going to a coffee shop where I'm going to be taking some notes by myself. But yeah, certainly different. Loads of sparkle in that. We'll take the cap off. So that comes off in half, one, about one and a half turns to take the cap off and reveal the now on nib. So here we go. The nib, all one colour. One of the things I would like to see is I'd like to see the nibs in different colours. You know, well, we've got two tone. On there, we've got some decoration. We've got the breather hole. We've got the now wall logo. There's nothing on the nibs that give you an indication as to what the point size is. So there's no M, there's no B. If I fetch the other one in, there we go, just so you can see both the nibs side by side. I think the nib on the purple one, to my eye, it looks more of a silver colour or maybe a rose gold type colour as opposed to the goldy colour we see on the yellow one. Both steel nibs. I don't even think there's a gold nib option available for these. It's a cartridge converter. So if we unscrew that, we can see here's the included cartridge converter. There we go. There's the ink. Fair bit of ink still left in here. All metal fittings, so not really a pen you could eyedropper. Which is a shame because I think if you could eyedropper this, especially because you've got that slightly translucent barrel, I think that would look really nice. If I hold the pen in my hand, it does feel a bit on the short side. The section, my fingers fit quite nicely. And where my fingers are is just below the thread, so I don't actually feel the threads at all. It's got this lip at the bottom. I personally find that a bit uncomfortable, but I don't like these lips on a lot of pens because I find that they really they dig into the tip of my finger. Will the pen post? Sort of. It will post, but it feels, well, it feels clumsy and slightest tap, off it falls. So you could get away with it, but I find I have to use this unposted. And unposted, just about the right length for me but it does feel a bit on the narrow side let's pop the cap on what i'm going to do is fetch in some other pens and we'll do some size comparisons so the first comparison that's with a pilot metropolitan 
and with Alami Safari. Shape-wise, the Metropolitan and the Key West look very similar. Of the three pens, Key West ever so slightly longer. And I think you can feel that difference when you're writing. I think it's just the thinness of the pen. That's what really, not to say it turns me off, but to me that just doesn't feel right when I'm using it. Let's take the caps off and look at them unposted. Here they are unposted. What I've tried to do is line all the nibs up so that the top of the nib is all level. Nib wise, the now wall slightly larger. I want to say it's a number six, but I'm not 100% certain. I've not really taken it out to have a look at that. When we see them unposted, the Safari by far the bigger of the three now. There's not a lot of difference between the Metropolitan and the Key West. I also think the Metropolitan ever so slightly narrower in the section than the Key West, but we're not talking a lot. I'm not going to show you these posted because as I said, I don't think the Narwhal Key West posts very well. What I will do is swap these pens out and fetch in some that are roughly in the same price range. So the pens I've brought in, I've got here a Moonman M800. This is with a bot nib that was 66 Australian dollars. We've got the Narwhal Key West that was also 66 Australian dollars, but the purple version that was 75 Australian dollars. The last pen I brought in is a Twisby Diamond 580 that was 72 Australian dollars. So the Key West, I've tried to put it as close as I can in the middle of the two pens. Unposted, the M800 and the Key West virtually neck and neck in terms of size, whereas that Twisby ever so slightly longer. All three of them have got fairly narrow sections near the bottom, but I do find this shape here on the M800, that makes such a difference. It makes it feel really comfy to hold. Whereas the other two, they just feel too small in my hand as if my fingers are cramped together. Let's pop the caps on these. With the cap on, I've got to be honest, they're very much the same size to me. There doesn't seem to be much in it. Right, we've looked at some comparisons. Let's get these out of the way. Fetch in the rule of measurement and we'll look at some sizes. So here's the rule of measuring. We'll take a look first with the cap on. 14.2 centimetres. Uncapped. That comes in at 12.5. Should you really insist on posting it, I say I wouldn't recommend it. It doesn't post very well at all. That comes in at 16.8 centimetres. Some widths. The width of the body at its widest is 1.26 centimetres. The width of the cap at the widest is 1.44 centimetres. And with the section, it goes from 0.97 centimetres to 1.13 centimetres. I do feel it is a very narrow section. Let's get this out of the way and fetch in the scales of weighing. Here we've got the scales of weighing. So the entire pen, 27 grams. The body, remember there is some ink in this, 17 grams. The cap, 11 grams. Not overly light, but certainly not one of the heaviest pens I've got. Let's get this out of the way and we'll fetch in the notepad of testing. Here we've got the notepad of testing. This is Ayush paper. It's an A4 notebook, 100 GSM paper. This is really nice fountain pen friendly paper. So we'll fetch in the pen and we'll start to write. So we've got a narwhal. Key West. I know I keep saying the gold one. This is the Isla Morada model. You can see why I say gold. I struggle saying a lot of these words. And it's a medium nib. As said, this was 66 Australian dollars. The ink is by Colorverse. And it's Martian. Just going to do a little sample now also with the purple version. So here's a purple version. So this is a narwhal. 
Key West. And this has got a broad nib. It's the Las Coloradas. Okay. I said, I found this on the web for it's the last Colorados. Check it out. Siri likes to interrupt me today. I've done a number of videos today and in every single one she's commented. So that was 75 Australian dollars. The ink in this purple one is by Van Diemen, which is an Australian company based in Tasmania. And it's called Twilight Mist. Right, we'll switch back to the gold pen now. Drying times. Immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. I'm trying to take the paper away with me. Finally, one minute. After a minute, still smudging a little bit. Tell you what we'll do. Let's go for two minutes. After two minutes, still smudging a little bit, and I do remember to hold the paper down this time. I'm going to move the mic and write a sentence. I like using this pen. There's a bit of feedback, which is what I like. I like a tactileness and nature to my pens, but it's not scratchy. It just feels as if it's been really well tuned. Line variation. So this is no pressure. And here's me adding pressure. So I do see a wider line. Let's do some and, there we go. That wider line not really coming through much when I'm doing them S's, the nib, does feel quite stiff. It's certainly not a flexible nib. It's a steel nib. You know, I think when I'm pushing it, I've got to be honest, I think I'm lucky getting them lines there. This is more like it where there's very little in the way of line variation. Final test, the scribble. The flow keeps up really well. I've had no issues with hard starts or with skips. Really nice, enjoyable pen. Let me fetch both the pens back in. I'll fetch in the purple one as well. With this Martian ink in this gold one, I think this ink looks really nice. I can see some shading coming through, loads of character. And I think the ink color really matches well to the pen body. So let's give this pen some stars. Pen looks. I mean, you can look at them. They're really nice. The sparkliness in them fetches some real interest. As I said, yes, I wouldn't use them in a business setting, but there's quite a lot of my pens where I would say that because, you know, especially some of the more colourful ones, you will go to a meeting and people will be thinking, well, he's a bit of a weirdo with all these sparkly pens and all these colourful pens. But it's still a nice shape, it's still a nice colour. I like the fact we've got that little bit of translucency in the material. To me, it's nice to be able to see the converter. I'd have liked to have seen a little bit more translucency, but I'm being very, very picky with that. The trim, the trim matches up really nicely with the body. I think the whole thing well thought out. So for pen looks, 9 out of 10. Writing experience, it's nice, it's smooth. I've got a little bit of audible feedback. I've got a little bit of texture coming through as I'm writing. To me, as I keep saying time after time, I love the tactile nature. I love to feel the nib going over the paper. Not too much, just a little bit, but enough that I've got that tactileness. I've got that little bit of vibration coming up into my hands. The nibs aren't scratchy. I've got a broad, I've got a medium. Both of them write really well. The pen does feel a bit short in my hand we'll go for the purple version certainly feels a bit on the narrow side i'd have liked maybe 
an extra half a centimeter to a centimeter in length and then it would be perfect and maybe another three or four millimeters in the width again would have made that perfect for me but i'm being very picky there and it's a very personal choice but for writing experience i'm going to give it an eight out of ten ink flow yep yeah, had no problems had no issues with the flow no hard starts no skips i have had some issues with both pens with some other inks but they were more viscous inks and I was finding that, that, yes, I was getting some issues there with hard starts. Most of the time, just pulling a nib, giving it a clean, that seemed to sort that out. But it's still an issue I've had. I can leave these pens a number of weeks. When I pick them up, they both write straight away. So for ink flow, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Value for money. I think they're nice pens. I think they look nice. I think for $66 and $75, I think they're well worth it. With this purple one, why it was nine dollars more is this was a limited edition color so the standard colors are this gold color and the blue color i've not really bothered with the blue because i've got quite a few blue pens and i don't have that many gold ones which is why i went for this one and then i like purples as well so when the purple limited edition came out i thought yep yeah, we'll have that as well the pens right they do what i want they let me get ideas out of my head and onto paper and in a manner that I more or less enjoy. So value for money, I'm going to give this 9 out of 10. Which means the total score for the Narwhal Key West is 8.5 out of 10. So this has been my fountain pen focus of the Narwhal Key West. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have you got one of these Key West pens? The only one I've got missing from my collection is the blue one. But I think with two, that gives me enough coverage. Although I may end up getting one of those blue ones in the future. Please drop any comments down below. Let's kickstart the conversation about these pens. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like. Every time you comment just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.